When scientist and engineer at the time was fascinated by nature and blessed with a problem-solving mind able to combine the disciplines of art and science, he looked at flight from a different perspective and understood that it must be able to be described by mathematics that, if understood correctly, could then be applied to make people fly. That scientist and engineer was Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was born in the town of Vinci, Italy on April 15, 1452. Not much is known about his childhood other than his father was wealthy and had a number of wives. About the age of 14 he became an apprentice to a famous artist named Verrocchio. This is where he learned about art, drawing, painting and more. Leonardo's fascination with anatomical studies reveals the prevailing artistic interest of the time. Although the date of Leonardo's initial involvement with anatomical study is not known, it is sound to speculate that his anatomical interest was sparked during his apprenticeship in Ferrocchio's workshop. Leonardo became fascinated by the figura instrumentale dell'uomo, man's instrumental figure and he sought to comprehend its physical working as a creation of nature. Over the following two decades, he did practical work in anatomy on the dissection table. Leonardo da Vinci used a drawing technique called hatching. Hatching consists of straighter curved lines drawn close to each other to give the illusion of value. Da Vinci was left-handed, and his hatching lines went from the upper left down to the lower right. Fifteen artworks are generally attributed either in whole or in large part to him. However, it is believed that he made many more only for them to be lost over the years or remain unidentified. The authorship of several paintings traditionally attributed to Leonardo is disputed. Leonardo's robot was a humanoid automaton designed by Leonardo da Vinci around the year 1495. The design notes for the robot appeared in rediscovered sketchbooks in the 1950s. It is not known if during Leonardo's life any attempt was made to build the device, but once the discovery of the drawings was made, it was built based faithfully in Leonardo's designs and it was shown to be fully functional. The robot is a warrior dressed in German-Italian medieval armor, which is apparently capable of making various movements similar to those of humans. These movements include sitting, moving the arms, neck and jaw in an anatomically perfect way. It is interpreted that this is the result of Leonardo's anatomical investigation in the canon of proportions he describes in The Vitruvian Man. convinced that the secret behind the human flight was in the wings of the birds. Leonardo da Vinci was convinced that the men could dominate the flight. Even though he had not designed an aerial machine, he was already thinking how to cushion his fall. This coincided with the idea of the parachute and the measures it should have. And I put it this way, if a man has a linen tent of compact fabrics without any holes 12 arms long and 12 wide, he can throw himself from any considerable height without injury.
taking advantage of his observations, Leonardo da Vinci wrote his two famous treatises on the flight of birds between the years 1486 and 1515. Drawing inspiration from the fluttering of the birds he designed his own adopter, looking at details such as the gliding of the birds or the takeoff of the birds' birds and came close to the design of the current Delta wings, designing several models for one or several passengers and even two-story, alternating designs in which the pilot was standing or lying down. Da Vinci's helicopter also known as the aerial screw measured around 15 feet in diameter and was to have been constructed from linen, reed and wire. There is no sign that da Vinci ever made any efforts to actually push ahead with the construction of a device. However, he clearly spent a lot of time thinking through the practicalities of building it. Beside the sketches, the artist has scribbled if this instrument made with a screw be well made. That is to say, made of linen of which the pores are stopped up with starch and be turned swiftly, the said screw will make it spiral in the air and it will rise high. Within the frame of his studies about the flight, Leonardo designed an instrument for measuring the wind intensity and direction in the so-called thin sheet anemometer. The wind intensity is proportional to the shift of the thin sheet, measured along a graduated scale. The wind direction is shown by the position taken by the wind vane. The original Leonardo's drawing, between 1483 and 1486, on folio 675 of the Codex Atlanticus Leonardo annotates for measuring distance traversed per hour with the force of the wind. Here a clock for showing hours, points and minutes is required. The use of gear wheels for transmitting motion is an old one. During and prior to da Vinci's time, gear wheels were used mainly in large machines such as mills, hoists and cranes da Vinci was the first to study gearing and gear wheels in great detail. His notes contain a great variety of gear teeth and devices based on these mechanisms. The Last Supper in which Jesus declares that one of the apostles will betray him and later institutes the Eucharist. According to Leonardo's belief that posture, gesture, and expression should manifest the notions of the mind, each one of the twelve disciples reacts in a manner that Leonardo considered fit for that man's personality. Jesus' serene composure, with his head and eyes lowered, contrasts with the agitation of the apostles. Thaumogenism The painting is likely of the Italian noblewoman Lisa Gherardini, the wife of Francesco del Giocondo. Just like William Shakespeare on literature, and Sigmund Freud on psychology, Leonardo's impact on art is tremendous. Throughout his life, Leonardo da Vinci avoided the intrigues of worldly ambitions and vanity. He was a reserved and withdrawn man, not concerned with glory, and yet absolutely sure of the value of his abilities. Along with a small band of contemporary Renaissance figures, Leonardo da Vinci became the center of a movement of artists that has permanently enriched Western culture. Thank you for watching our channel. Please help us pressing the subscribe button and give us a thumb up so we can keep making more educational videos.